किसी भी होली 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 आर यू गार्ड लॉर्ड ऑल माइडी हेवन एंड अर्थ आर फोर ऑफ योर ग्लोरी Hosanna in the highest heaven let us pray when we raise our hearts and voices to you o god proclaiming that you are holy we know that we have come here to worship you we know you are in our midst At the time of worship you meet us as we have come here to meet you. May this union and this gathering cause you delight and be a blessing to us. As we worship you in our own ways we give you thanks for yesterday for all the gifts that you have given us. for your steadfast love for your grace that is sufficient unto us as we remember with thankful hearts all that you have done for us we can live today with strength and courage knowing that you are with us and we can look to tomorrow with hope because you have already traveled ahead of us for all your manifold blessings we give you thanks but because you blessed us so much oh god we dedicate ourselves in your presence asking that you would use us to your purpose to serve you we humbly seek your guidance show us ways through which we can make the world around us better and in so doing may our lives become better to be agents of transformation oh god is what we are asking but we also know that in the process we are transformed too grant us your joy if you fill our lives with joy joy will spill out of us and touch other people's lives grant us our wish fill us with your grace be with us now for our personal prayers we are offering before you hear us hasten to our side We give you thanks for Madison Avenue Christian Church. You've been with this church for over 100 years. We know that you are with us now. And we know that you will guide our path in the years to come. We pray for our world. We pray for peace. But for peace to come, all violence should cease. we cannot bear to watch the death and destruction and devastation that is happening in ukraine we need for you to intervene oh god we as human beings we seem to know how to destroy then live in harmony but by your power may life be restored to all those who have lost so much for those who are in hospitals people who are recovering at home we pray at this time continue to be with us throughout this worship service hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying our father who art in heaven <clears throat> hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now the reading of God's Word as found in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii? and given to the poor. He said this, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me.
text you heard read today reads differently in John's Gospel. The same story appears in other Gospels, but John has a different fragrance to that whole story. He sets it as something just before the death of Jesus. There is something in that story I want to dismiss because it it's a distraction really, this stuff about Judas. And um, it calls him a thief. And he makes a case about the, the, it could have been given to the poor. Sounds so wonderful, but it really isn't. It has nothing to do with the poor. And Jesus says, you can take care of the poor because they will be with you. But I'm not going to. So, push that aside. And we'll get to the text. The way John sets up that material is a setup for worship. It is not just any worship. Look at how it is set. They were coming to the house of Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. There isn't anybody else you can invite to dinner who has raised someone from the dead. What that text tells us is Jesus who is present has authority over death and is the giver of life. What seems so final to all of us human beings is not so final to the one who governs over heaven and earth. So the setup for worship, the setup for our worship here is that the one who is present here is the one who raised Lazarus from the dead. Authority, power, and might. It is that Jesus who is present. And what happens after that is the big question. And how we internalize that and embrace that would also be an invitation for how we leave this place after worship. I've always been puzzled by Lazarus. You would think if you encountered anything like the power of God that raises somebody from the dead, you would want to say something. I don't know about you. I would get gibberish. Because I can't find language to talk about it. You would just be so overwhelmed by the glory and the power and the might of the one who can raise someone from the dead. You would say something. You would do something. You would talk about it from the rooftop. Lazarus didn't then. Lazarus isn't now. Look at how that story goes. Everybody else is energized and active and responding to the presence of Jesus, except Lazarus. John has a beautiful painting of how he puts Lazarus in that scene. Mary and Martha are there. And yeah, Mary and Martha have an active role. But it says, and Lazarus was just seated at the table. He's just there. Folks, if we are just there in the presence of mighty God, if our engagement in worship whether it is here or at a time when we invoke God's presence and feel God's presence, if our relationship and how we interact with the God who is present in our midst is just 
passive, docile, there isn't a excitement in us and we are being inspired and everything is transformed about us, we would have missed worship altogether. Lazarus is silent. What a tragedy. People of faith fall into silence when they are in the presence of the Almighty God. What a tragedy. People who call upon God's name would, after they call upon God's name, see their lives the same way they have seen before they invoke God's presence. What a tragedy. Because the presence of this God shatters reality, defies logic, invites an entirely different spectrum of life to us. And my prayer is, this story would call us to recognize our own silence, our own passive engagement, with God and ask the question why am I not transformed? Is it because God is not powerful or is it because I am just engaging with God as a matter of habit and not being willing to be surprised by the one who changes realities? Jesus comes to the house of Mary, Ma Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Other Gospels leave a little question there. The, 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 the argument could be is, it could have been Mary Magdalene, we don't know which Mary, but not in John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, it's clear it is Martha's sister, Mary. Who is this Mary? This is the same Mary before when Jesus came to the house and, and uh, Martha was busy cooking and making a feast. It is this Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus. So Jesus is present, it is time for worship, and how does worship happen? Worship happens by responding to the presence of God. You and I, we would worship if we are becoming aware and we respond to the presence of God. If the Spirit of God moves us to look at ourselves and the world differently, because worship is about response. Responding to the one who is among us, who is with us, who is in our midst. What is the response in this text? Martha engages in hospitality. Folks, hospitality is not about being nice. Hospitality is extending God's goodness in you to others. To the people around. What happens in that text is hospitality. They say that about Madison Avenue Christian Church. People always say, that's a warm place. They are nice people. What are they talking about? They are talking about hospitality that's present here. That hospitality extends in so many service ways. Serving God, hospitality. You know, we are hearing so much disaster all around us. It's numbing, folks. But in the midst of that, there is so much good that is happening. There, is this, there are these stories coming out of Ukraine. There's a story about this woman who is in Poland, who is trying hard I hope she's not trying anymore and she has been fortunate. She's really frustrated, by the way. She's been trying hard to host a refugee family. And the way it is happening is, this is all done online. And when there's a family that comes and it wants housing or any other need, it is posted 
online and there is a website you can go to and this woman has been trying and she says every time something is posted get this in 30 seconds it's taken somebody has already come and taken it i still have not found someone because i'm not fast enough and savvy enough hospitality it's changing the world it is changing her Look at her anxiety. When have we been anxious as a church and a worshiping community because we cannot respond fast enough and we are eager? Worship, hospitality, sense of urgency. But there's another story that's coming out of Ukraine. They captured this Russian soldier in Ukraine. And the town gathered around him. He's in the middle, trembling. Because he knows they are going to beat him to smithereen. And as the crowd gathers and he is standing in the middle, one single woman walks up to him and gives him a cup of soup. He holds it in his trembling hand and does not know what to do. He doesn't know whether to drink or have his last meal. As he is doing that and drinking that soup, another woman walks by and she hands him a phone, her phone, and says, call your family back home. They must be worried sick about you. Call them. The soldier breaks and he drops to his knee right there in the middle of that crowd and starts sobbing and says, I can't go back to the war zone. I can't go back to killing people who are so kind and so wonderful. Hospitality. Hospitality is becoming active. Hospitality is an extension of worship. Hospitality is what happens when we become aware of the presence of the Holy One, the powerful God in our midst, and we call upon the name of God in worship, hospitality. That's what is happening in that story. Martha, Mary, and Mary cannot contain herself. Lazarus is quiet. One sister is providing hospitality. The other sister goes to the worship's sky end. She just kneels at Jesus' feet. It's a different kneeling than what she did before. Before she knelt at his feet and he, she learned she was being instructed by the rabbi of all rabbis. This time she anoints the feet of Jesus with oil and the fragrance spreads the room. I don't want to go through all the cultural aspects of what she did, untie her hair and all that. I want to talk about the fragrance. It's sweet smell. Worship is about fragrance. It changes everything about you. And you know something? People who worship and know about God's fragrance in their lives are people who are bold and courageous enough that we can rise up above and change the stench that is around us and fill the world with the fragrance of sweet perfume that God provides. All of this is happening. You know why? Because they were aware of the one who raised Lazarus from the dead, whose power and might is about anything that this world can imagine. And they were worshiping. And how did they worship? They were filling the world with fragrance and service and hospitality, which is worship to God be honored.
power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen. body but we have many gifts let us pray holy God we come to you with our concerns and desperate struggles there are many who have little resources don't know how they're going to survive because of what you have given us we also are called upon to give to others may we extend our giving hearts whether it is through our financial help or talents, or our time. We ask for blessings upon our gifts and those who are able to give to the promotion of your good news and healing actions in our community. This we pray through Jesus Christ. Amen.
When we arrived this morning, we entered into the normal bustle of a church on a Sunday morning. Friends greeting each other, children bringing their energy and enthusiasm. Now that we are sitting together in the pews, I invite you to take a deep breath and consider the word sanctuary. A sanctuary is a place set aside for sacred things. It is a place of refuge and protection. This room is a sanctuary. The season of Lent is kind of a sanctuary extended in time. And one of the things Lent teaches you, too, is that you too are a sanctuary. There is inside you a place for sacred things, a place where God abides. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of war and oppression in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to you. We invite you into our inmost being, only to find that you are already there. Strengthen us in our quiet places and then lead us into the work of justice and peace. Amen.
All are welcome at this table. Let us make a prayer of thanksgiving before communion. Lord, as we approach Easter, help us to let go of our worries and our worldly concerns, which are always with us. Allow us to see the miracle of the presence of your presence in our everyday lives. Give us a communion, a communion with you at this table that extends beyond these sanctuary walls and after this hour. May we long for your presence and touch as extravagantly as Mary in today's scripture. In such longing, may we experience your presence in our lives as we take the bread and the wine and throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us hear the words of institution from the book of Mark. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread. After blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. 
Let's all drink together. Well, Simon said we're all a bunch of welcoming, warm people. <laughs> That's a reputation, self-proclaimed. It's true. If uh, over the past several weeks or even today you've discovered that Mac could be a conduit through which you could worship God or have a better relationship with God, we'd love it if you come and join us. During this last time, you can walk down front or you can contact Simon directly or any of the elders by any medium you would like. Think about it as we sing this last hymn. peace, you saints of God. Fill this world with God's fragrance, for God is with you now and always. <laughs>